Hey everyone, History Mystery Man back with you again and back in Fairmount, Indiana. I guess the lure of James Dean is just much too much. And it didn't hurt that the Winslow family, whom James Dean lived with here in Fairmount, reached back to me and offered up an interview. Um, so I'm forever grateful. I'm so excited. There it is again, the beautiful farmhouse. Gosh, I just love this place. It's such a beautiful property. We're gonna be going in here and chatting with the first cousin of James Dean. And it looks like there's some activity back here, some cars, so that's a good sign. They didn't forget me, because I'd be crushed if they forgot me. But anyway, I'm back to the Winslow Farm, built in 1904. Isn't that cool? It's so well-preserved, it's absolutely beautiful, and I'm so excited. Maybe we should knock. Hello. Hello. Is, Are you uh, looking for Marcus? Yeah, is he yeah. here? Right over here. Oh, okay. Are you a part of the Winslow family? I'm Chuck. I was the one that contacted you on a... Uh, oh, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. You are Marcus's son? Yes, yeah, so I'm the youngest. Okay. What's it like growing up as a, you know, relation to James Dean? What's that I been? I never really thought much about it. I, I know. It's just part of growing up here. I mean, sure. I've been that way since I was born, so... This is a beautiful farm. Thank you. I hope he's expecting me. Yep, he's in there. Okay, okay. All right. Hey, hey. Was that you that honked at me? Yeah. How are you, sir? Fine. How are you Good. Doing? I'm fine. I'm fine. Thank you so much for the invite. This is Marcus. And that's Marcus, right? This is Don. I gotta ask you. 49 Ford. Am I? Oh my gosh. Oh my lord. <laughs> Did that actually belong to James? No, that was my dad's car. That was your dad's car? Yeah. Okay. Jimmy used to drive it. Jimmy used to drive it. Wow. The stool came, and they drove to the senior prom, and especially after he moved to New York, when he'd come back on visits, that's the car that he'd drive. Uh, so he took his prom date in that 49 Ford to the senior prom, Fairmont High School senior prom of 1949, mm -hmm. the year he graduated. That's fascinating. Have, I know, has anyone offered to buy it from you or wanted to buy it? Yeah, I've had people ask me, but I've never entertained any offers or anything. Yeah, I picked up a quote in the newspaper somewhere. You said, yeah, but Jimmy drove it and it was Jimmy, so I'm not selling it. It's, yeah. but, well, it was my dad's car too. Well, sure, sure. Can I sit in it? Or, sure. Or, I mean, oh my God. <laughs> I, James Dean drove this car a Ford Custom 1949 Ford <laughs> to his senior prom. What else happened in this car on that night? <laughs> I don't want to ask. <laughs> oh my God, this is so cool. <sighs> Look at this big old steel steering wheel and the steel dash. It's great. It's beautiful. Oh my God. Oh, that isn't what I think it is. Is it? That wouldn't be his, is it? No, it's from his class. It's the class of 49. That I got gotcha. you. Look at that. Jim Dean looked in that mirror. Wow. This is so cool. Sorry, I know this is real kind of geeky, but this is a really, really a thrill. That's a three speed on the tree kind of thing. Yeah. AM wow. radio dial. That's all you get in 1949. Gosh, how beautiful. Thank Is you it? so much. Mary Fairmount, who was also a good friend of Jimmy's, said him and Jimmy took that car one night and Jimmy was speed shifting it. And all of a sudden the transmission started making a clicking noise. And uh, so they were going to the show. So they went ahead and drove it over to the show and Marin worried about that car all the time they were in there. And then when they come out, they got in it and drove away and it didn't make any more noises. Hmm. So uh, I imagine it chipped off a, a tooth in one of the gears. <laughs> but, you know, it's, it's never caused any problems. So it's got that same transmission in it? Yeah, oh yeah. Same motor? 
Yeah, this? Is it? NBA, yeah. Wow. You have quite a collection here, by the way. Yeah. Beautiful. Yeah. Beautiful. What is that a Model A, Model T? Model A. Model A. That came from Fairmount originally. Is it? Jimmy's father was my mother's brother. I got you. I'm sorry. How, how old were you when he died? 11. 11, okay. Now, do you remember exactly what you were doing, where you were, who told you when you heard about his death? Oh, yeah. What, what was, where were you? What, what do you remember from that moment? Well, my mom and dad had gone to California to visit Jim and his, his dad, stepmother, and they were on their way back home when, when Jimmy died. And, uh, of course, back then there wasn't cell phones <coughs> or anything, and there wasn't any way to get a hold of them to tell them. And, uh, I was staying with my sister. She always kept me when mom and dad would go out there. They'd go out there every other year. Uh, they'd be gone for three or four weeks. And then next year, Jimmy's dad's stepmother would come here for three or four weeks. So I was staying with my sister and the phone rang after we were in bed. Uh, we were, me and my sister's son were sleeping upstairs. And I could tell something was wrong, but I didn't know what it was. And I didn't get up to see. And so then the next morning, uh, my sister's mother-in-law, which lived next door, she stayed with us kids. And she told me that Jim had been killed in a car wreck uh, the night before. And of course, I knew what the commotion was from the, you know, from uh, the phone call. And mom and dad, that was on a Saturday morning. And mom and dad didn't get home till Sunday night. And the neighbor over here seen the lights come on near the house, so they called mom or they called my sister and told her that. Uh, they thought mom and dad were home. So she came over and then she told them. And, uh, you know, it, 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 mom, of course, mom was really upset. Uh, I didn't see her till the next evening when I come home from school. And her face was as red as your jacket from crying. Hmm. And, uh, I don't think her and dad ever did get over it, really. Yeah, I mean, that's, I guess that's pretty standard. We don't ever get over the people we love when we lose them. We just, I guess, maybe learn how to deal with it a little more effectively over the years. Yeah, but that's true. Maybe you're not supposed to get over it, you know? Yeah. I mean, how do you get over that? I know. <laughs> what, you know, what, in his case, it wasn't like it could people leave you alone and, and let you forget it. Almost every day, there was something going on that kept kept it right on, on the top of your mind all the time. Sure. And and really, it's been that way ever since. Does it does it kind of blow your mind that there's still so much interest in this guy yeah. all these years? I don't know, 65 yeah. years later, 66 yeah. something. Yeah. It's, yeah, it is pretty incredible. It really is. Yeah. It really is. And and and. I mean, maybe it's because he only got to live for 24 years, so the lure of James Dean is, is even greater because of that. Had he lived a full life, maybe it wouldn't be as much. I don't know. But, I don't know either. But I, I know that... Um, so, so he made three films, uh, the first of which was East of Eden, the only one he ever got to see released. Mm -hmm. Uh, then he made Rebel Without a Cause and Giant. Neither of those two films he ever got to see, or see the release anyway. He was gone before they came out. I did read where there was, I think uh, they had a, a, a private viewing for the family in Marion to see East of Eden or one of those movies. Do, do you remember that? Did, were you invited? Did you go? Yeah, yeah. Um, they got me out of school that day, and I got to go. And uh, the family and close friends got to go. It's pretty neat. I'll bet. Uh, I, I couldn't believe how much, it didn't seem to me like he was acting. It was just, that was just him up there. 
and uh, East of Eden's always been my favorite of the three films. When I first came to Fairmount last year, and I don't know how it is, I got interested in James Dean, and it's, it's been ongoing ever since. Um, I didn't know a lot about him, but I, I've been reading about him ever since my visit last year. And of course, you know, I had to race home and, and see, uh, watch all the movies. I just had to do it, which I wanted to see what this guy was like. And that's the thing. One of the things that really stood out to me in watching those films was how good he was. I thought he was just some good looking, cool macho dude that looked good on the silver screen. I, I didn't know, but he was really good at his craft. And so he, he was so, so good at it. He took it very serious. I, I can tell. And I guess that's part of the lure, what might have been, you know. Uh, you can only imagine the motion pictures that would follow on the heels of those three. Yeah, he had some, some other motion pictures lined up to do. I know. Me and the rest of the public only know James Dean through East of Eden, Rebel Without a Cause, and Giant. Was he at any way like the big star we saw up on the silver screen? Were there any similarities? Help separate, if you would, if you can, the James Dean of Hollywood from the Jimmy Dean, as he called, it was called here. In East of Eden, there were some similarities, but not in, in Rebel or Giant, I don't feel. No? Uh, he just did a good job acting in those. But in East of Eden, it sure just seemed like him up there. Uh, just the way he'd carry himself and the way he'd talk. And uh, it was pretty spectacular, I thought. Yeah, I, I, they're all spectacular. Yeah. I really like Giant, too. I yeah, mean, they're, they're all good. I mean, he's on the line about 30 minutes of Giant. It's the 32 best minutes of the show. <laughs> I mean, it's just, I love that movie. It certainly wouldn't be what it is today if he hadn't been in it. No, n no doubt about that. And that goes for the other two mm -hmm. as well. Have, have you seen the movies over and over? Can you still watch them? I mean, or do you still enjoy them? Or I don't watch them often. Yeah, I mean, you've seen them a million yeah. times, I'm sure. I've seen them several times. Yeah. Not as many as a lot of the fans. Yeah. Some uh -huh. of the fans have just seen them over and over and over. I, I, don't, uh, I don't care to see them over and over. You know, it's, it's just too close, I guess. Yeah. His last visit to Fairmount, the February of 1955. Mm -hmm. um, what do you remember from that day, when, days when, when the photographer was here? Well, I remember when they got here. Uh, it was, as I remember, it was on Saturday morning. And uh, Dad and I went to Indianapolis to the train station to pick him up. And it was cold and blowing snow and it was pretty nasty. And they were late. They were about an hour late of getting in. And uh, I remember him coming down this stairway uh, to where the people sat to wait on people. And uh, did people know him at the train station? I mean, no, people no, were still no, getting to know no. James Dean. He came and went so fast that yeah. people no. didn't know he was the silver screen star yet. No. You did here in Fairmount, but not everywhere else. Yeah. Well, see, East of Eden hadn't even been released yet. There you go. He was released about a month after he was here, three weeks. And, uh, you know, a lot of people in Fairmount knew who he was, but they didn't really know what, what he was doing. And uh, so he didn't get to enjoy his fame here in Fairmount. Hmm. Mom stayed home and, and made a big dinner, which was common for her. She thought she had to entertain everybody. Hmm. And... Uh, of course, all the time Jimmy was here, someone was calling, wanting to talk to him for, for one reason or another. And uh, it was all very interesting to me, of course, as a little kid. And uh, when the Life magazine came out, why? You were all over it. Yeah, there were some, <laughs> uh, some pictures in there. Yeah. But, uh, I, of course, I really enjoy those photos because it was the last time he was here, and I can remember every one of them, every one of them, but I see, I, you know, I remember when we shot it. Yeah. And, 
and it seemed like when I get on from school, he'd want to go to town, and he always wanted <laughs> to go with him. That's so cool. Yeah, that is so cool. And, uh, you guys hop in the car and go. Yeah, and uh, he, of course, a lot of people, everybody knew who he was, but he didn't know who everybody was. <laughs> And every time someone would holler at him, he'd ask me who that was. <laughs> and uh, I'll never forget Vic Selvitt owns a bank in Fairmount. He hollered at him from about half a block away and wanted to talk to him. And, and uh, Vic had a Jaguar, a sedan, a big sedan, and he wanted Jimmy to drive it. So Jimmy said, yeah, bring it out. And, and uh, <coughs> So he brought the Jaguar out, and, and he had his daughter with him, uh, Vic Selby did. And we all got in that car, and Jimmy drove to Jonesboro, and uh, back here. And of course, every time he'd go around the corner, he'd gun it and spin the tires a little bit. <laughs> too fast to live, too young to die. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and I think Vic got a big kick out of it. I bet he did. I know you've had some interesting visitors, uh, people pounding on your door. Bob Dylan, did I hear that? Yeah. Bob Dylan, what did he do? Just knock on your door? Just about. <laughs> <laughs> well, my son has called me at about 2 o'clock in the morning and said Bob Dylan was on his way out here. And they walked from Fairmount out here. Really? Yeah. No kidding. That's a long walk. <laughs> and, and some of his people with him, you know, he didn't walk by himself. But uh, I really wasn't very familiar with Bob Dylan at the time. I mean, I, I knew the name, but that was about it. Yeah. He was pretty quiet. He didn't have much to say. What did he want to see? Did he did he ask to go in the house? Did he, what did he? Oh, we invited him in. Yeah. He came in the house. Yeah. He had a, a lady with him. Anyway, my wife recognized her right away. Really? And struck up a conversation with her. She was real nice. She did most of the talking. Bob didn't talk much. <laughs> did Elvis pound on your door? No. No Elvis? No Elvis. If Elvis was ever here, he'd make himself known. Yeah, because I know he was a fan of James Dean, actually. Yeah, he was. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, there had been so many come and go. I, I know. I've forgotten a lot of them, but... Yeah, yeah. It's, it's just interesting. I mean, I was out at the uh, grave last week, and, and it was a steady stream of cars. Mm -hmm. They just kept coming. And you try to be mindful and respectful and take so much time and move on so someone else can have their piece at the grave. But uh, it was interesting to me that just all, the, what's, uh, all these years later, he died in 1955, and there's so much interest around the man still yet today. I know that right after he died, some of the interest died down, but it, it got going again, and it's never stopped. No. Yeah, I go, of course, this road goes right by there, and just by every time I go to town, I look over there, there's usually a car there, or a car going or coming. Or mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. yeah there's, there's a lot of traffic there. By the way, your farm is, is just beautiful. Well, it's, it's gorgeous. I, I absolutely love it. And, and I read where it was built in 1904, I think. That's right. Yeah, yeah. It's, it's just I, I, any particular part of the farm where you'd find James Dean outside of the house. I mean, I, there, I read where he, he, would, he would shoot hoops for hours at basketball in, the, in a barn or a yeah, garage or something. In the big barn, there was a couple of basketball goals, and he'd go up there. And, of course, he had friends that'd come out from town. and. They'd go up there and shoot basketball, and he was a good basketball player. And that's probably one reason he, he got to shoot a lot of basketball up there in a barn. Is the hoop still there? Mm -hmm. Really? Yep. Are you going to let me take a picture of it? Sure. <laughs> that would be a big deal for me. <laughs> oh, oh, Lord. Oh, I, this is just so exciting for me to be here. Um, you see that barn in a lot of those old iconic photos from the 50s. So this was definitely a part of the original farm. So beautifully preserved. I mean, this... So this is where James Dean hung out a lot, in the barn. 
Oh my lord. There it is. Dean spent hours shooting hoops here in the barn. Right here. That hoop. <laughs> the original chain. Gosh. I'm so glad they left it, you know. And from that hoop to Hollywood. From hoops to Hollywood. Wow. I gotta back up just to take all this in. I wanna get a good picture. This is a neat barn. Yep. I love it. God, look at that. It's all wood. Look at that old roof. Wow. The roots of James Dean. Man, I want to shoot some hoops now. Huh. That's so cool. And I'm sorry, were you going to, did, Jake? I'm Jake Roth. You're Jake Roth. Okay, how are you connected to all this? Well, Marcus has loaned us pictures. We made James Dean Lions Club in for 30 years. This is a, this is 30 years from 1990 through 2019. We quit making them. We're thinking about coming out with a new pen. All these pens are numbered. So when we first started, we made 500 of these, 500 of those, 1,000, 500 and the rest, 1,000. People would reserve a specific number. So every year we made a pin, they got the same number. And in 2005 and in 2015, we made a money clip and they were all numbered. So the people got the same number pin, got the opportunity to buy the same number money clip. In 2010, we had an opportunity to buy the old high school stage, our old high school. Well, and the high school's gone, right? High school's gone, yeah. And uh, I wish they would have preserved that. Here's what the stage looks like. It was a cool building. Yeah, I this, know. This coming year, we'll have fourth annual concerts at the James Dean Memorial Stage. And this is last year's concerts. Uh, we had eight, eight, six bands last year. We got eight bands this year, and this is all the sponsor. This, I'm going to take you down to the stage. When you say stage, up. are you talking about the, the stage of the theater? Yes, of, wow. of the high school. Of the high school Where theater. Dean performed. Wow. His first performance. So the high school's gone, but you saved the yeah. stage. We bought it in August of 2010. Took us. When you say we bought. Who, Lions Club. Well, I'm Lions. sorry, you probably said that earlier. I'm, I'm sorry. a spearheaded person. Okay. There get it done so you might say that's really fascinating you know we lost the high school but you saved the stage that's so cool yeah. Yeah. So how many times did james dean turn that knob and turn to his favorite radio station <sighs> i feel like i could just sit in this car all day i'm not going to <laughs> thankfully i'm not <laughs> i promise but this is such a huge deal for me Oh, interesting. Hey guys, how are you? You guys are like celebrities. You live on the farm that James Dean lived on. You guys know that? Did you know? Well, you need to know. I think you know. What a beautiful farm. The rolling hills off the back. I don't know that I've ever seen a more well-preserved farm anywhere. And I mean anywhere, this is just beautiful. <laughs> 